I am Jim Scott. I'm a researcher, historian, and writer, and I love writing about characters of the Old West. One of my favorite characters was a U.S. Deputy Marshal called Bass Reeves. And here's the story I wrote about Bass Reeves. The life and time of U.S. Deputy Marshal Bass Reeves. This is a story not of infamous outlaws, bank robbers, cattle rustlers, and thieves, but a man who wore the star for the U.S. District Court at Fort Smith, Arkansas, known as Bass Reeves. And how he caught those who from the law were running with skills he used such as acting, disguises, and cunning. His reputation as a dedicated lawman he well did earn. Hollywood filmmakers took parts of his life and times and created the character U.S. Marshal Rooster Cogburn. He was born in Texas into that peculiar institution with no way out and at the time no solution, for in slavery it was all work with no restitution. He grew from a boy into a big young man with very large hands and muscular arms like two pythons, long powerful legs like steel bands. With guns and knives and such still on his mind quite fervent, when the Civil War began, his enslaver, Colonel George Reeves, decided to take young Bass to war with him as his body servant. No one knows what happened between them to cause their separation. There have been many rumors, yarns, and many fabrications. Suffice it to say that Reeves never gave much thought to being a slave or being someone's body servant as, as his life's vocation. No matter what happened in that situation, Reeves moved on and make, made a good name for himself in what was called the Indian Nation. His time spent in the nation did him no harm, for he learned to communicate with each tribe in their own native tongue and the meaning of all their talismans, spirits, and charms. He also found time to perfect his mastery at all manner of firearms. Now in those days, with no female in his life, he considered and weighed the possibility of searching for a woman he thought would make a good wife. It was not long before he found a young lady he thought would make a suitable mate. All was left now for her to say yes and the two of them to set a wedding date. The wedding was a small affair, nothing all that fancy, a little drinking, dancing, lots of good food from the neighbor's pantry. The cutting of the wedding cake was the last too raw. After the party was over, they loaded their buggy and headed to Arkansas. They settled down on their farm and started farm life, raising chickens, horses, cows, and pigs in the pen. And oh yes, by the way, they raised a brood of children numbering 10. Sometime in the year of 1875, U.S. District Court Judge Isaac Parker, the hanging judge, who was not prejudiced and was not partial, summoned Reeves to Fort Smith to be sworn in as a United States Deputy Marshal. As a lawman, he was fearless and it was said he had true grit. Word around the nations in the Oklahoma Territory was that it was a sure bet that whatever he aimed at, he hit. He always rode a big horse about 19 hands high. People asked him why did he ride such a big horse, and he would say, Anything smaller was, would be as useless as a preacher in a bar fight. Just when you needed him the most, he'd have to think about it and try to decide if it was wrong or right. Now, he was a contemporary of some of the legendary lawmen of the Old West. After all of my research and examining the records, my opinion is he was one of the toughest, smartest, and one of the best. Now, some may not agree and have their own beliefs and will stick to their gun. Well. I would just have to say that the difference is none of the others had to arrest their own beloved son. Bass did. Many of the well-known outlaws, after learning that Bass were on their trail, was not sure if their life would end up in a prison cell or in a gunfight, resulting in a quick trip to hell. Why, even infamous Civil War female spy turned outlaw Belle Starr after learning that her friend Bass had a warrant for her arrest and was hot on her trail, went to Fort Smith and asked to be locked up in jail. After all those years of devotion to duty and delivering lawbreakers to pay for their crimes, he was never glorified in movies nor history books as others of his time. Rarely, if ever, there was a mention of his name. 
Finally, in the year 1992, his day came. Bass Reeves was inducted into the National Cowboy Hall of Fame. And I'm sure that in that building with all the cowboy names on that wall, there's surely enough room to add one more name, a darn good cowboy, Doc Stovall. Thank you.